Let's keep it concise. Let's talk about the games for next week. Week two of the CFL season gets underway on Thursday when the Calgary Stampeders visit the Ottawa Red Blacks. Calgary will be without star running back Kadeem Carey while the Red Blacks are trying to snap a 12-game home losing streak that dates back to 2021. With Calgary favored by five and a half points on the road, which team are you taking straight up and against the spread? This game's simple to me. Take the points, take the points, take the points. You have the Ottawa Red Blacks, who I believe play better overall, except for Nick Arbuckle on the road last week against Montreal and should have gotten a win, and they want to own end their own home winning streak. And I can't trust Jake Mayer being a heavy favorite on the road. So I'm going Red Blacks straight up. Yes, get in on some of that money line with a little sprinkle. And Red Blacks plus whatever points you'll give me. Five, five and a half. I don't care what it is. Give me them points. I'm going to go against you here, Dunk. I'm going to take the Calgary Stampeders. Yes, we eviscerated Jake Bayer in an earlier segment. But to me, oh, wow. the Calgary Stampeders are going to cover this spread. At least that's my projection. Demontre Tuggle will be making his CFL debut in the backfield for the Red Blacks, who did not run the ball very well last week. This is a team, as JC said, they haven't won at home since 2021. I don't see that trend changing. The Stampeders cannot afford to start the season 0-2. I'm taking the Stampeders. I don't like I don't like eating points on the road, but I will make an exception for this one. I'm 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 coming up to the buffet, boys. I'm hungry. I'll eat the points. <laughs> well, you know, I hate it when mommy and daddy fight. So I'm going to split the difference here. <laughs> I, I can't trust Jake Mayer to cover this spread, especially when it's at five and a half points. We've talked about his problems and how he looked in week one. I don't trust him a lick, but I don't trust Nick Arbuckle either. So I think Calgary will win this game, but I'm picking Ottawa to cover because that five and a half point spread is just too big for me. If it shrinks down to under three, maybe I consider Calgary covering. But at five and a half points, I've got Ottawa covering the spread. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers take on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders at Mosaic Stadium on Friday and are decided favorites in hostile territory. Quarterback Trevor Harris missed practice on Tuesday after taking a huge hit on Saskatchewan's final offensive play. Why was Shea Patterson not in the game? I'll never understand. I don't care what you say, Craig Dickinson. Though head coach... Craig Dickinson did say he will be fine. Who do you have in this battle of the prairies? To me, this is the easiest line of the week to bet, boys. It's the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, minus three and a half on the road. Again, I don't like picking against home dogs, but let's look at the facts here. Fact number one, the Riders are playing on four days of rest. They played on Sunday night. Now they're playing on Friday night. That's really hard to do, especially when the Bombers have had a full week to rest and recuperate. Fact two, Trevor Harris, who's 37 years old, is not healthy. Dickinson said it's a it's a hit pointer. Yes, he said he'll be fine, but let's also note that Craig Dickinson has also not been honest all the time in the past when it comes to the health or the availability of his starting quarterback. Fact number three: the Winnipeg Blue Bombers completely and utterly classed, outclassed the Hamilton Tiger Cats in week one. That team absolutely blew the doors off the Tiger Cats in the first half. They won by eleven even with three, what I would call, not not necessarily fluky, but very bizarre touchdowns by Hamilton in the second half coming as a result of turnovers. Yes, it's not easy to win at Mosaic Stadium, but the Bombers have won there every game dating back to 2019. I am taking the Bombers to cover this line. I am as well. I, I have no idea, even understanding the advantage of playing at home, how this is just a three and a half point line, right? Winnipeg is in a different stratosphere right now than Saskatchewan is. That's just a fact. It's been that way for several seasons now. I don't trust the Riders. And here's the biggest thing for me. Willie Jefferson's going to trot out on that field for Winnipeg. Who the heck is blocking him in Saskatchewan? Do they even know who their tackle is? Trevor Harris, if he's healthy enough to even run around, is going to be running for his life as Big Willie J comes off the edge. It's simple, man. Take the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and eat all them points that Hodge was talking about earlier at the buffet table. There is no way that I can see that I would want to put my money down on the Riders this week. Now, sometimes there are surprises in the CFL, but I don't see this happening for a number of reasons that you guys laid out. And 
also because I think the Blue Bombers are supremely focused on getting back to that Grey Cup goal, and they literally do things. One play, one practice, one game at a time. As cliche as it is, they are so focused on this. They were pumping in music. Michael Shea knows what this rivalry means to the fans. He was talking about Mosaic Stadium or even IG Field would be packed if they played a game between the Bombers and Riders on Christmas Day. So a little bit of levity from the coach who doesn't necessarily show that all the time. I'm taking the Bombers straight up. And whatever points you have to eat, eat them, lay them, bet the Bombers. Yeah, this line opened at Winnipeg like minus six. It's moved down. To me, I would be happy to take Winnipeg up to minus seven. I would. I'm happy to eat a touchdown. Beyond that, I might consider changing course, but I'm happy to eat minus seven. The Edmonton Elks travel to the BC Lions, where these two teams faced off twice in 2022, with the home side coming out on top in both games by a combined score of 105 to 29. That's what we call a shellacking, boys. This will mark the first time the Lions wear their new home uniforms and also the first time JC has ever listened to LL Cool J's music. (laughs) The BC Lions are favored by six and a half points. Do you think they can cover that spread against Edmonton? They do. It's a massive spread, but recent history is in their favor. You mentioned that home margin there. I'm going to extend it out. The last four games that BC has played Edmonton BC has won by a combined score of, get this, 179 to 53. I think the smallest margin of victor- victory there was 16 points. That's good enough for a cover here. Now, most of those games, Nathan Rourke was under center, but Vernon Adams Jr. also won their last matchup by 16 points. He's looked good so far with the team this year. I trust BC to come on out on top over an Edmonton team that, frankly, did not impress me in week one. The fact that JC has never heard LL Cool J's music is something like a phenomenon, something like a (laughs) phenomenon. But this game, to me, is not a phenomenon. If you're going to give me that many points with an upset Chris Jones and Terrell Cornelius, who I think at this point, yes, it's early, and I said we needed to have some of the other side of the story earlier in the podcast about this, but I think he's playing for his job, fellas. If he goes out and has another terrible performance without Geno Lewis taking footballs off the top of defensive back heads for 100-yard touchdowns, then you got to talk about mixing it up at the quarterback position. So I'm taking a motivated Edmonton Elk squad that also knows that they went in there last year. Yes, it was Nathan Rourke and got whooped a couple times by the BC Lions. So I'll take the points. I don't love it. But early in the season, I think that's the prudent play in the CFL. I'm going to go with Dunk here. I think that the Edmonton Elks, as much as we talked about how much the offense struggled, their defense looked unbelievably improved from last season. They finally got the personnel locked down. Luches Purifoy holding down the back end. AC Leonard coming off the edge. Jake Ceresna making the transition from DT to playing on the edge on the other side. That is a very formidable duo. They're, they like their interior guys there as well. I'm taking Edmonton against the spread, BC to win, solely because I don't think the BC Lions are going to put up a ton of points here, and I think that the Elks can keep it within a touchdown. The Hamilton Tiger Cats drive down the QEW Highway for a matchup with the Toronto Argonauts on Sunday for the Boatman's first meaningful action since winning last year's 109th Grey Cup. The Chad Kelly era officially gets underway in the six, while Bo Levi Mitchell is aiming to bounce back after an inaccurate season opening performance against Winnipeg. With the Argos being short favorites, who you got? To me, this is a difficult game because you have a motivated Tiger Cats team that maybe looked better than they actually are, if that could be said in that game against Winnipeg. And I think a lot of people are talking about you know the close scoreline, even though I don't necessarily think it was that close because those plays that happened that led to Tiger Cats touchdowns, you can't count on those. Michael Shea said as much, the Bombers head coach. So I think that's a bit of a write-off. The positives for the Tiger Cats is that Bo Levi Mitchell was very close to hitting a bunch of deep shots, but... I think this Argonauts team is the most deep team in the East Division in the CFL. And I think they're better along the offensive line and defensive line and definitely more consistent in the trenches than this Tiger Cats team. So, yes, it's Toronto's first game of the season 
And yes, I'm hype about Swag Kelly season, but to get the Argos as short home favorites was a surprise to me. So I will take the double blue in these fresh baby blue Cambridge blue uniforms. Got it right just for you, JC. We're still a long ways away from getting depth charts for this game. So keep in mind, this line could move a lot from the time we're recording this. To me, I like the Toronto Argonauts up to a field goal minus three. Beyond that, I would take the Ticats here. I think this is going to be a very close game regardless of how it goes. I think Dunk is absolutely right. The Ticats are going to be motivated and Chad Kelly is going to be looking to establish himself as a top quarterback in this league. The Argos must be absolutely champing at the bit here. No game in week one. They're the last game in week two. There's going to be all the Grey Cup festivities. I know sometimes that can lead teams to come out a little bit flat, but I'm happy to take the, the Argos up to a field goal. Week one buys are tough, right? You have that momentum of training camp, and then all of a sudden you get the break when you don't really need it, and you've got to catch back up before your first game of the season. But I don't think it affects Toronto all that much in this game, and I don't trust Hamilton right now. I'm high on their hopes for the rest of the season, but they need time to gel. That much was evident in that first game. Tim White and Bo Levi Mitchell just weren't quite there yet, and I think they need several weeks until they'll get – to that point where they can connect on those deep throws and with regularity. So I'm taking Toronto as the short favorites. Quite frankly, I would take them up to five points.